We're now going to try a real example. I'm going to open up a drawing of an apple that we have done before. So I will go and open the apple template. The apple will start it out its life as a pencil drawing. I'll position it in to the screen where I can see it. Now using the pen tool, we will start to just lay down lines by clicking and dragging and going around the outline of the apple. Just like the template drawings, in that we're matching the curves with the background template. As we lose position here, we can use the space bar to change to the hand tool without going back to the menu. We continue around to a piece of detail here where we need to magnify. So we'll magnify that, go to the pen tool, and continue. To indicate the corners here, we remember we push down on the option key to establish new directions. Here we're indicating corners by using the option key and redragging on the anchor point. We need now to back away from the image using the option key on the magnifying glass to get the apple into position. We now continue with the pen tool. To close a path, we have to click within two pixels of the previous thing. And notice that to make this nice and continuous, both the first curve and the last curve of the path change. When we preview this, we notice the curve is filled with black. That's not what we want. So we go to the style and use the paint menu. The paint menu says that now we can fill it with 30% gray, the apple, and we're going to outline it in black. We will use a line width of half a point. A point is a 72nd of an inch. The line styles here are various options we have, but we'll leave them alone. Now when we preview, we can see that the apple is nicely outlined and filled with gray. Going back to the artwork, we now position it on the screen so we can see it. To start the stem, we press, drag, press and drag. To indicate the corner, we use the option key to start a new direction. To go around the top of the stem, we have two corners there, so we've used the option key twice. This is a good size to work as going around the smooth parts of the leaf. When we get to the small corners on the top of the leaf, I'll want to zoom in. Positioning using the space bar to get to the hand tool. Now, in this section, each curve is connected by a corner point, so all I need to do is hold the option key while constructing these sections of curves. So I'm holding the option key down and just constructing small sections of curves. It's not too important that these be exactly right because it's easy to go back later and edit them at any magnification so that you can see precisely how you want them. The most important thing is to get the structure of the curves correct at this point. I'll just continue around the leaf. Now we're smooth again so I've let up on the option key to keep the curves smooth between their joints. I use the hand tool to adjust the picture on the screen. I come around, and now to finish the base, since this is going to be filled, I'll close off the curve by double-clicking on the first point of the, of the stem. When I preview this, it's the same coloring that we've used last time, and so I don't really want to do that. What I'll do is come back and I'll fill the leaf with white and leave the outline in black. This will give some contrast between the apple and the leaf. That's nice. Now to finish the apple, we just have two lines. A little dimple here, which we just press and drag. Since this is a simple straight line, or a simple line that doesn't need to be filled, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up and I'm going to set the paint to indicate that it's not to be filled, only outlined. First I'll match the bottom of the stem to that curve. Magnifying greatly will go in here and move those endpoints of the stem so that they match the curve on the dimple. Change the direction lines so that all of this matches. This will make a cleaner drawing. To finish, I only need the little curve at the top of the stem. So I just draw that. Since the drawing mode has no fill in it, this is correct for that portion of the curve. To verify that everything's OK, what I'll do is I'll preview.
Now, let's go back to the artwork and template and do some last minute editing on the leaf. So I'll get it into position and I'll zoom in on the leaf. Now I'm going to pick up the select tool and go change some of those little corners so that they more carefully match the, the template that's underlying them. You'll notice that the editing is quite powerful here because I can use the marquee and select all of the points. When points are selected, they're black. I move the selected points around and you'll notice that they stay hooked to the leaf. This is a powerful way of editing. I can also grab individual points on the leaf and move those around. This just gives you some of the editing power that's found in the Illustrator.